Thank you very much, Jody, for the um, nice introduction and to Code Pink for um, inviting me to come speak here uh, and for being an inspiration. Y'all have been around for 15 years. My organization's been around for about 13 years, so it's been a long time of um, looking up to y'all. Lots of supporters from Code Pink. Medea's been a very generous supporter, and we thank you for that. Um, so I do want to let folks know that we're changing our name from Iraq Veterans Against the War to About Face Veterans Against the War. Uh, and just the quick and dirty version of why we're doing that is because we've always been post 9-11 veterans. Um, we've had veterans from that served in Afghanistan, that served as uh, drone operators, that served in other places around the world that are war resistors. And so we've always had this issue um, where the name Iraq Veterans Against the War didn't actually match up with our full membership. And so that's why we're making that transition. Um, and we're excited to let you all know about that. The other thing I want to share is the work that we've been doing called Drop the Mic, as in military industrial complex. Um, and so it's a campaign that we have been building for a while now. It was born around May of 2015 when we had an organizing gathering um, in Detroit. We're a membership-led organization, so all of the decisions that we make take a long time to um, discuss, debate, and make decisions with a democratic process. Um, but we've done that um, and decided to focus in on the military industrial complex and thinking about how we can reclaim our resources from the military industrial complex and drop the mic. Um, and so, you know, I came here wondering, hey, have they figured out anything beyond what we have in these two years that we've been digging into this? Because it's so huge and it's so complex. Um, we started looking at these lists of kind of bad actors in the military industrial complex, looking at who's getting the most money in contracts, um, who's getting the most fines for violations, um, who's making the most profits, and a lot of overlaps on, on those lists and a lot of the same um, corporations folks have been talking about and mentioning here. Um, so, you know, we are excited to hear folks' ideas and work that's moving forward. When we talked about um, divestment as a tactic for our campaign a while back, it felt uh, like it wasn't really our skill set and our strength as um, post 9-11 veterans talking about how this war budget doesn't actually support the troops, um, how it's robbing resources from our communities. Um, so it's something that we're really interested in. We spend a lot of time looking at and talking to folks um, who are involved in BDS and, and other work in that area. Um, and we want to figure out what folks are going to be pushing forward that we can participate and, and be a part of. Um, so <laughs> what we've been doing over this past year has been a drop the mic speaking tour. And um, we've teamed up with other organizations around the country, um, ones that I spe specifically participated in. Um, were close to my home in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, we teamed up with folks from Black Lives Matter and from a local organization, Concerned Citizens for Justice, there um, to talk about the connections between militarism at home and abroad. Um, similarly, in Boston, we teamed up with Black Lives Matter in Boston um, to talk about those same issues. So something that we're really thinking about is how do we draw closer with folks who are looking at uh, militarism at home and dealing with the issues here. Um, and not ask why aren't people participating in our anti-war activities, but how can we build those relationships um, to be stronger? How can we show up for these folks? Um, one way we've been looking at that in addition to connecting with these organizations and groups that we want to have um, share their, their stories and their messages and build together, we've also been looking at uh, the policy platform um, for the Movement for Black Lives and the invest, divest portion of that policy platform really clearly lays out a lot of what we're talking about and a lot of what we're trying to do as far as taking resources back from destructive industries and putting them back into our communities, putting them back into the things that make us healthy, happy, um, safe. <sighs> I took notes in such a weird way all over the place, so I'm going to kind of just jump around with things that I want to share. I don't feel like I have a ton of new information. Um, the things that speakers have shared have really resonated. Um, 
Some of the ways that we're looking at going after the military industrial complex, we've been calling the four P's of the MIC, and so we're looking at their profits, their political influence, their public image, and talking about the privatization of defense industries, um, which is really leading to the out of control profiting <laughs> that's, that's coming from this destructive industry. Um, we're talking about just transition as we change from this militarism economy that we're finding new jobs for folks, new ways for people to engage uh, in the world that again is making their communities, our country, the world, um, hopefully a better place to be in. Um, Yeah, definitely the 1033 program was brought up, uh, the program that sends military equipment down to um, the local level. We found out in Colorado that even um, the, the Child Welfare Service, I can't think of the name of, of the department right now, had one of the military MRAT giant vehicles. <laughs> and we're, we're trying to understand why that possibly could make sense um, what reason there could be for, for that department to have a piece of military equipment. And it's the same across the country. It, it's in schools um, are getting equipment, weapons, ammunition uh, passed down, and they want to use that equipment. They want to go out and practice with it, and they want to use it in the real world situations. People brought up SWAT. Um, that's another area that there's been just exponential growth over the past 10 years where now even small rural police departments have SWAT teams. It's um, pretty unbelievable. I'm gonna wrap up so I can help us stay on time and still have um, some time for questions um, if folks are interested. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's been clear to us working on this for two years and still coming to a point of where we're like, ah, uh, you know, there's all these different areas that we can chip away, that we can pull away support from the military industrial complex, that we can build up support for community-based health, wellness, safety. Um, but how can we get more concentrated, more unified on how we're doing that work together? And so I'm really interested in building with folks and figuring out how we can do that in a unified way in a way that, that has a lot of impact and really shifts um, the resources in this country. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it.